Hey, so I'm Elon, and I'm here to show you how to practice using conjunctions with your kids, make it a little easier for them to get better at um, forming complex sentences, sentences with ideas, like multiple ideas in a single sentence. Um, and we have these conjunctions. We're going to get into kind of what they are and how they work and how you can practice with your kids without going totally nuts. So a good place to begin is what is a conjunction? You use them every day and you may not even realize it. A conjunction is a word that connects two ideas in a single sentence. So here it says, I go to school so I can learn. But my conjunction here is so, all right? But I have two ideas going, right? Idea number one is I go to school, right? That's something I do every day and it's one thing. But there's a relationship here, okay? Because I have something else that I'm stating is that I can learn. Whoa! And so um, those trackpads don't work so well for me. So the idea is you have these two different ideas and it puts them in relationship to each other. And so there's different relationships that we'll see, but this is what a conjunction does. There are a lot of conjunctions that we use during the course of our day. We might say, however, therefore, nevertheless, but here are some that are really like you're going to be using with your kids all the time. You're going to say if, right? If you want to do this, first you have to clean your room. When? When I get home, I'll make some dinner, right? But. I would like to help you, but first I need you to help me. Before, before you can go out and play, you need to do your homework. After, you can do your homework and after you can go out and play. Why do I need to do my homework? You need to do your homework because that's how you get better at doing things, unless I can't go out to play unless I finish my homework first. Since. Since I haven't finished my homework, I can't go out to play. So I did my homework, so now I can go out to play. So like I was saying, these conjunctions establish a relationship between the two ideas. Um, so one example, when we use if then, right, that's a cause and effect. If you miss the bus, then you will be late for school, right? If you do your homework, then I can take you out for ice cream. Others may demonstrate a sequence of events. I can play with my friends after I do my homework. There are lots of these, right? So, uh, before is another sequence of events, right? Before you go to school, I want you to make sure you have some breakfast, right? So if it comes up every day in everything you're talking about and everything you do, how do you like stop and recognize it? How do you say, oh, we're gonna practice this now? So one thing is that you actually can recognize it in your everyday speech. You can, once you've like practiced this a little bit, you can say to your child, oh my gosh, Remember, we were just talking about this. Here we are doing it, okay? But the actual practice is pretty straightforward. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take out something to write with. You're gonna take out something to write on. And you're gonna get yourself some pictures, all right? They can be pictures from a magazine they can be pictures on the internet. They can be pictures right from your own phone, right from your child's life. You take the pictures and you look at them together. And you're gonna make sentences using these conjunctions about the pictures. Let's look at some examples. Now, I personally think that silly pictures are the best way to go about doing this because the more fun you're having with your kid and the more fun your kid is having the easier this is going to be on everyone right if you have to sit down and look at 
things that are frustrating, things that are annoying, things that you don't like to look at, you're not gonna wanna do the activity. But if it's something that makes you giggle and they enjoy spending time with you, you just got a twofer. So you're gonna choose just one conjunction to work on, okay? And you're gonna just focus on making as many sentences as you can about the picture with the one conjunction. Now I think that but is a really good one to focus on. One, because eventually you're gonna tire of it when they start to make jokes about the word but. However, but in the meantime, you actually get to establish a condition and it's something that the kids can think about and use on a regular basis, right? Um, they want something, but they can't get it because, or they didn't do something, right? So they're not getting something. So um, some examples here, the, dorm, uh, the dog likes warm weather, but he's not a cactus, right? That's a nice costume, but it doesn't look too comfy. I want to be a dog, but I don't want to be that one. One of the great things about this activity is that you really don't even need that many pictures, right? If you want to keep gathering more pictures, you can do that. But if you want to recycle the same image, it's actually a good thing. Because for one, if you're working on that word, but, right, they practice it. They might even come up with the same sentences over and over, but they're not so good at it at first. And they get that practice by repeating and repeating and repeating. So they're going to create those sentences better and better each time they do it because they're on familiar ground. They've thought about it already. And then when you're ready to move on to a different conjunction, now they have a whole new perspective on this very same picture that they've already been using. Right? So we decide to use the word before. Oh, the dog will need a drink before they take another picture. Right? He looks sad because the costume is uncomfortable. After this is done, he's going to eat a hearty meal. What's really important to remember here is that this is an activity that you are doing together with your child. You're not saying to your child, oh, did you do your homework? Go and do this. This is something you do together. So you have the opportunity to model for your child. This is how we do this. Oh, here's a sentence I can come up with. Right? Why don't you try to change that? We can change the order of it. We can change um, some kind of a condition of it. Let's see how many sentences we can do together. You're going to form some of these sentences and coach your child. Slowly help them to become independent with the task. They are not independent yet, and it's going to take a while. The most important thing in all of this is to be patient. This is a learned skill your child doesn't quite have it down yet, and they may need some real coaching and some real time to get this right. So don't just say, oh, that's wrong, try again. But say maybe, oh, did you mean this, right? And kind of help coax the answer out of them. Perhaps you can say, oh my gosh, that's really close. If you just take out this word or change this right here, and you can be looking at the piece of paper or the whiteboard with them and show them how to make the change so that they can understand and see it. And you're modeling for them how to get it right and how to try again and to not be discouraged and to continue with the process. Last but not least, make it fun. Find pictures that make you both giggle find things that make you hoot. The more fun you are having, the more they'll want to do this with you and the better it will be. The better they'll get at it because they want to do it. It's a fun activity when we're doing it right and we really feel like we're growing and learning together. And I hope that um, this was helpful and that everybody 
who watches this um, feels like they know how to move forward with this. All right, take care.